from Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut. This is The Pulse. Hello, and welcome to The Pulse. I'm Kristen Brunell. And I'm Gina D'Amico. Today, we will look, take a look at the Student Entrepreneur, the 10th anniversary celebration of the Chapel of the Holy Spirit, and much more. We are approaching the 21st anniversary of the death of Matthew Shepard, a gay college student from Laramie, Wyoming. Sacred Heart University's theater arts program is revisiting this tragic event through its production of The Laramie Project 10 years later. Here's Matt Krecke with the report. I think uh, they sailed to Robin, found out about his lifestyle, and then used it as, in the trial as an excuse. I'm not sure I understand. Are you saying that it wasn't a hate crime? Sacred Heart University's theater arts program is spreading a message of acceptance and anti-hate through their production of The Laramie Project, 10 years later. Laramie Project, 10 years later, is actually the sequel to The Laramie Project. And The Laramie Project is telling the story of Matthew Shepard, who was a gay boy who was murdered in 1998 in Laramie, Wyoming, and the Tectonic Theater Project a bunch of people from the theater company decided that they wanted to travel to Laramie in 1998 and interview a bunch of people in a town and kind of tell the story, but through first person interactions in the town. Sacred Heart University Performing Arts has a special connection to the town of Laramie. Teresa Lofman, the choir assistant seen here in this video as a little girl, grew up in Laramie, Wyoming. Wyoming is like a very different spot. Everyone is so friendly. You walk down the street, everyone says hi to you. It's just, it's very warm, very loving, very friendly. So when that happened, it was kind of a shock to all of us. Just the fact that there were that kind of evil people in our little town was just like, it just completely changed us. And it brought a bunch of attention to us that was very unfortunate. I mean, everyone knows Laramie, Wyoming now because of that. And it's kind of sad because we're a lot more than, than that. There was a letter from a guy lamenting the fact that not enough people were coming to the football games. And I was like, well, geez. There's plenty of room for my letter. Laramie Project 10 years later is that that same theater company decided to go back on the 10 year anniversary of Matthew Shepard's death and interview the same people from the town to see how Things have changed over the last 10 years in regards to the uh, LGBTQ rights in the town, if people were more accepting now of the gay community. And it really just tells a lot about how people write their own history. So bringing a show like this to campus and talking about the issue of hate crimes and hate crimes specifically against the LGBT community is a really important topic to discuss. And it brings a story that maybe not everyone knows about such a small little town. And I just, I think it's a very important story to share. That 2020 piece has had a tremendous negative impact on how Matthew Shepard's death is perceived. For The Pulse, Matt Krecke, Fairfield, Connecticut. The Laramie Project, 10 years later, will have its final weekend of performances in the Little Theater October 3rd, 4th, and 5th at 8 p.m. and October 6th at 3 p.m. Tickets are available in the Edgerton Center box office. This month, Sacred Heart celebrated a big campus-wide birthday. On September 18th, the SHU community gathered together to honor the 10th anniversary of the Chapel of the Holy Spirit. Papal Nuncio to the United States Archbishop Christophe Pierre, along with the SHU community, came together in celebration. Here's Ali Plesia with the story. After many years of construction, Sacred Heart had built what is proudly known as the heart of the shoe community. On September 18th, Sacred Heart celebrated the 10th anniversary of the Chapel of the Holy Spirit. Papal Nuncio Archbishop Christophe Pierre joined the shoe community for the big celebration. Father Ed Stewart sat down with us before the honorary mass and spoke about the arrival of Archbishop Pierre. The Mass of the Holy Spirit is pretty much common in all Catholic universities as the opening Mass of the academic year. For us, it's a bit more important this time around because it's also the 10th anniversary of the chapel, which is such a significant building architecturally uh, in terms of 
the mosaics and its central location, like right in the middle of the campus. Everything kind of radiates around it. And then for the fact that uh, the papal nuncio is joining us for the celebration. Uh, as you know, like I'm only here a year, so I don't have a long history with the institution itself, but my understanding is that the nuncio has been here once before, uh, that he knows Father Tony and Dr. Patillo quite well. And so it's kind of a, a, a relaxed and very pleasant event. Looking forward to having him join us and to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the chapel. The 10th anniversary of the chapel honored the hard work of Father Marco Rupnik, who created the mosaic contributing to the beauty of the chapel. Larry Carroll from the Office of Mission and Catholic Identity goes into depth about the prominence that the chapel holds on our campus. So the chapel itself, it's our place of worship, but it's also a place that welcomes people of all traditions or no tradition because it's a sacred space. Anytime anyone needs to find that quiet space to come in and just be peaceful and reflective on their own life and the part that their life plays in the world, it's the place to go to. And so the artist, Father Marco Rubnik, the architects intended to create that sacredness so that anyone could walk in there, take time to be still, turn off all the other things of our world and our technology, and just be at peace and listen to the inner movements of one's spirit and heart that would then hopefully help us as we go back out into our everyday life to have a greater sense of balance and purpose in the ways in which we can particularly help to change the global community. Following the anniversary mass, a youth festival was held to highlight the Office of Mission and Catholic Identity. So the youth festival is a chance for our students to showcase the work that they are doing in and around the greater Bridgeport community, as well as the international trips that we provide uh, for students to gain access um, to work with some of our community partners, both here and internationally. The Chapel of the Holy Spirit continues to be the heart of Sacred Heart. For all who participated, the 10th anniversary was a special way to honor the beauty and importance of the Chapel of the Holy Spirit. Welcome. When you become a pioneer, you will have 1,048 days from move-in to graduation. How will you use them? How will you serve? Where will you explore? How will you lead? How will you connect? How will you express yourself? How will you show your spirit? What will you make? You will have 1,048 days. Make them count. Make them count. Make them count. Make them count. Welcome home! Welcome home! Welcome home! Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. the nationally ranked Sacred Heart University dance team had been led by the same head coach, Deirdre Hennessy. This past year, Hennessy retired from her position. For the first time since its start, former assistant coach Raina Van Florke has big dance shoes to fill. Now she takes on the role of head coach. The dance team has performed at all home football and basketball games since its beginning when the team was founded in 1994. Former head coach Deirdre Hennessy played a huge impact on the development of the team over the past 20 years. Starting as a founding member, then as a head coach, 
Deirdre has handed over the role to former team member and assistant coach, Raina Van Forky, who takes it to new heights for the year ahead. When I first came to college, you're 18 years old, you're leaving your family um, for the first time, most, most kids. And Deirdre really filled that role of like a big sister, mother figure to me, and I know all my other teammates as well. Um, and just kind of guided me through college after taking a year off to do grad school and her inviting me back onto the coaching staff. Um, it really just became more of a coworker and just a friendship. Um, and now even as she's retired and I've transitioned from assistant coach to head coach, she is advising me all the way. I know that she completely has my back and I have her support. Um, through all of the decisions and it's really just been amazing growing our relationship as well as the program at the same time. Over the years, the team has taken on more challenging choreography. Since my freshman year, I would say that the bar has really risen and the level of difficulty has really just grown so much and trying to keep up with other schools and other competitors, we've really just been working hard and I think really just building a new image for ourselves. I agree. Um, as a senior, I think our collegiate image as a team has also accelerated. Um, technique individually and as a group, feeding off of each other is just on a whole new level this year. Um, and I'm really excited about it. As the season moves forward, the team members say they are eager for all the upcoming changes being made within the program as well as building on to their triumphs. Yeah, we're constantly trying to like improve our own choreo and just get different things going on. So I really think we're building our program and really seeing change. Van Florke continues to keep up with the legacy of Coach Deirdre while also bringing a new, positive, and exciting look to the team. The potential that this team has going forward, um, from when I started on the team in 2010, it has really just grown. The bar has been set so much higher. Um, I want to change up things for the girls and really just push them to their limits, um, keeping us as competitive as surrounding colleges that we compete against or that do football games and basketball games like we do and just kind of raising our bar as everyone else is raising their bar. Um, and I'm just excited for the team. They have a really positive attitude. I have three great captains leading them. Um, and just the, the whole vibe that the team has had so far this season, I just know that it's only going to go up. So Kristen, how has a new coach changed the dynamic on the dance team? She's really just brought a whole new level of ideas and just a whole new skill set to help us advance and excel further and it's just a new fresh perspective so it's been really great. I'm really looking forward to watching all the dances. This I'm semester. looking forward to performing them. A Sacred Heart University student is taking it to the next level, embarking on a new journey that may be a little different from an average student. Let's take a look. <laughs> Megan Yuranowski, a math major, decided to pursue her passion for fitness and open a nutritional shake shop in downtown Fairfield. So Next Level Nutrition actually started when I fell in love with Herbalife, at using Herbalife as my platform, but it, was, it uh, enabled me to create Next Level Nutrition, which is just part of the company. And Next Level Nutrition actually is just my own business. It's my own LLC. Um, I created it on my own. It's not a franchise. It's just my own nutrition club using the Herbalife products to help people become healthier. Next Level Nutrition is a smoothie and tea bar that opened in the beginning of August. The new shop features a variety of protein and fat burning drinks. So all of our drinks are actually Herbalife products, so everything we use in here is all Herbalife. Um, our shakes are 24 grams of protein, 21 vitamins and minerals, they're a full meal replacement. Um, and then our teas as well, our teas are only 5 calories, they boost your metabolism, they're caffeinated, they make you feel amazing, and they're all sugar free, which is awesome too. So we really stress that like you get both and like your shake is your meal and your tea is your energy for the day. Megan was inspired to take on a new passion as an entrepreneur while still being a student. 
I make sacrifices. I maybe I'm not as social anymore, but I make sacrifices for the things that mean the most to me. So waking up at 4:30, hitting the gym, um, coming here for seven. Whenever I am here, I'm not in class, and whenever I'm in class, I'm not here. I'm here as much as possible. Opening a business while still being in school was an adjustment for Megan. Normally, if it's not busy, sometimes in the morning we have like a couple hours, I'll be like, oh my God, I have to finish my paper, I have to study. But like, just really using like my time management every time I'm free, I'm trying to do my schoolwork just so I can like balance the two. Next Level Nutrition is promoting their business in many ways. So right now, our main way of promoting our business is definitely social media. Um, we do a, a dollar off if you post on social media. So that's been like a big hit because everyone will come and be like, oh my God, like I saw my friend post it, like we had to come. Another thing we do for promoting our business is tea drops. So we'll look, uh, reach out to local businesses in Fairfield um, and we'll be like, hey, like how many employees you have? We just want to like come pamper you guys, give you guys free teas on us. Next Level Nutrition is making a name for itself by partnering with a local gym, F45. After every F45 class, there's gonna be an option to get a shake afterwards. We, we really are like just stressing, like supporting local businesses because it's gonna benefit both of us in the long run. Having an impact on the community is an important aspect to Megan and her business. It's not just shakes and teas. It is way more than that. It's a community. It's people who care about each other. It's people who want to make a difference. People who want to leave an impact, a legacy of something like bigger and better than just shakes. She came first actually and she was like, I love it. It's so good. So we came and now I want to try every single flavor. I've literally been coming like four times a week. I'm so happy I came to Fairfield. It's really good having like both schools in the town. Owning one store is not the end for this young female entrepreneur. I have many goals in the future of opening up more of these, but um, for now I'm just going to run this on my own, wait for someone who I feel fit is able to run this store, and then I want to open up more. So Gina, did you have a shake or a tea? Well, I actually had both. Both were really good, and I definitely recommend going to try it. Awesome. I'll have to check it out. We'll go together. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up, another year at SHU and another year of searching for a parking spot on campus. And fall is here, and that means it's time to pick some new delicious New England apples. and caring because I'm junior and a nursing major so it's all about helping people. I wrote down uh, make people the best version of themselves. Find out who we are, what we stand for, and to become very good at that and have true conviction in life. And that's it. This campus gives everyone an opportunity to find their major, find their passion in life and uh, just to make a, war a difference in the world and to prosper and use that knowledge. Everyone can use a little more love in their life, whether we know them or not. Following years of student demand for more parking on campus, SHU made an important move by acquiring the former GE headquarters, including three parking garages. However, even with all of that space, there was still a need for more parking. So here comes another parking garage and Brianna Cielo with the story. 
Sacred Heart University has had a decade of constant construction, an award-winning chapel, more specialty buildings, dining areas, and new residence hall. The university has recently been named one of the top 10 fastest growing Catholic universities in America. With this continued success comes more and more high schoolers applying to the university. Each freshman class has gotten bigger and bigger, which literally leads to a roadblock, not nearly enough parking on campus. Parking has been a persistent problem at SHU, frustrating both students and public safety officers. Dan, can you tell me a little bit about your struggles with parking on campus? This year, especially, I've been very frustrated with the parking situation on campus as a junior. Living at the Ridge, which is technically university housing, I'm not able to park my car on campus until after 5 p.m., which doesn't make a difference for me because most of my classes are in the morning or early afternoon. Um, it makes me take the shuttle which is highly unreliable and in a way just is a headache to me knowing that I have to catch a shuttle to get to campus when it's much easier for me just to drive now that I have access to a car. In an attempt to remedy that issue, the university will be building a new parking garage. The garage will be built in the currently existing south lot, right next to the WSHU radio station and public safety building. The lot will provide 427 parking spots over the existing 153. Construction is expected to start this coming December and last for about six months. While this seems like great news, many students are concerned that there will be even less parking during the time of construction. Throughout those six months, students are encouraged to park in the parking garage on West Campus as well as the Trumbull Mall parking lot. The student body is hopeful that the new parking garage will help alleviate this very prominent issue on campus. For the Pulse, Brianna Cielo, Fairfield, Connecticut. Don't you think it's a little ironic that we won't even be here when the parking garage is up? I know, we've been waiting so many years for new parking and we won't even get to experience it. Tell me about it. So annoying. Summer was great, but now fall has arrived. And with it, the leaves are beginning to change, the evenings are getting cool, and the Apple Festival in Monroe is the perfect way to kick off the new season. Here's Anaya Vance with the report. St. Peter's annual Apple Festival is a great way to start off the fall season. This annual community tradition takes place at St. Peter's Church in Monroe, Connecticut. St. Peter's has been putting on Apple Festival since the 1950s. It's gone by different names over the years as the congregation has changed and uh, different fairs have happened, but we've been doing the Apple Festival since 2002. Over 100 vendors come and then we put on kids games, we usually have live music going on baked goods, snack bar, apple crisp a la mode, which is kind of our signature hits. Uh, we sell mums, uh, which are locally grown in Monroe, uh, apples and cider, uh, locally grown in Connecticut. Uh, baked goods are done by parishioners. Uh, we do a raffle. So it's a, really a kind of a big event for us, a community event, fundraiser, and all of that. Vendors come from throughout Fairfield County and the state of Connecticut, but some as far away as Vermont and New Hampshire. It's awesome. We get to meet a bunch of people. We get to talk to a lot of people about our cause, and we're able to help people in the community at the same time. Some of the vendors even come from nonprofit organizations. So, uh, we make dresses, all kinds of dresses for girls around the world. We make um, t-shirt dresses and sundresses. This is a sundress. And with every dress, we put a doll or a toy in the pocket. If it's an older girl, we'll put a floral headband or a bracelet, a beaded bracelet in the pocket. And then they, everybody gets a new pair of underwear in the other pocket of the dress. The St. Peter's community and families were gathered at the festival the weekend after Labor Day, eating apples, listening to live music, and being festive during this fall season. I'm having a really fun time. For The Pulse, I'm Anaya Vance, reporting from Monroe, Connecticut. Well, that's all for this show. I'm Kristen Brunel. And I'm Gina D'Amico. From all of us at The Pulse, thanks for joining us. <laughs>